Welcome to the channel and welcome back people who follow us on a daily basis. Um, coming to you from Shenzhen here in China. Weather today is 18 degrees and clear. Quite a nice sunny day today. Um, right, so as usual, first of all we'll do the numbers. So cases within China are as follows. There are 72,528 confirmed cases. There are 1,870 deaths. There are 12,561 people whom have recovered, which if you take the uh, recovered and the dead from the total, that gives you an active um, sort of confirmed amount of cases uh, 58,097 and there are currently 11,741 um, severe cases there continues to be four provinces that have more than 1,000 reported cases that is Guangdong with 1,328 Hernan with 1,257, Zhejiang with 1,172, and Hunan with 1,007. Um, something to note today, over those four provinces, there was only 19 new confirmed cases in total, which is, is really good. And all across China, um, as of Monday, there were only 84 new confirmed cases. So a majority of those cases are still in Hubei province. So if you look at Hubei province compared to the rest of China, Hubei province has 95.6% of total cases and the rest of China has 4.4% of recorded cases. So on to global figures outside of China, there are 806 confirmed cases, three deaths and 110 recovered. So the active confirmed cases stand at 693. Um, as you can see from this um, graph I've now got on the screen, you can see that the number of confirmed cases uh, outside of Hubei province continues to fall um, on a daily basis, which is really great news. And out of the ratio of deaths versus recoveries, and these figures are based on the number of people who've either died or recovered. It doesn't include any of the people who still have the virus because we don't know the outcome of those cases at this stage. So if we take Hubei province within China, which is the worst affected province, there have been 1,789 deaths, which is a total of 18.5%, and recovered 7,862, which is 81.5%. Uh, the rest of China, excluding Hubei, deaths 81, which is 1.7%, and recovered 4,699, which is 98.3%. And then globally excluding China, there have been three deaths, which is 2.7%, and 110 people who have recovered which is 97.3%. Before going on to the rest of the news, I'd like to discuss an article that I came across while doing my, my daily research for these videos. This was an article that was published in the Global Times and it talks about two unusual COVID-19 cases in Xinjiang County, which is a county in Henan province. It talks about two patients and one of the patients was confirmed to have been infected uh, 34 days after returning from Wuhan in Hubei province. He returned to Xinjiang on January the 14th and went into hospital on January the 28th. And he first had three of the NCOV 
19 tests before being diagnosed as having the virus. Now, there's two conclusions here. Either he didn't develop the virus for, for quite a long time, many days after the initial contact, or the tests were giving negative results when in fact they were positive. And the second patient was confirmed to be infected a full 94 days after coming into contact with his father-in-law um, who had been to a Wuhan hospital for medical treatment. He began to live with and take care of this person from the hospital on November the 13th and then moved back to his own home on January the 31st. So hopefully these cases will be looked into a little further to determine if there's anything um, unusual about these. Um, but it does point to the fact that the incubation or period as I say, it could be, could be longer than, than really first thought, and it is quite concerning. So an announcement by the World Health Organization um, that suggests that of all the people who contract COVID-19, approximately 2% will die from the disease. A further 80% of patients who contract it will only um, get mild symptoms, with 14% of the cases will be severe, and a further 5% of the patients will have critical condition. A number of events around the world are being postponed. Um, the latest to be reported to be postponed is the Beijing Auto Show. This normally attracts more than 800,000 people and is held biannually. Um, and this year it was due to be held in April, but it has now been postponed. Also, the Japanese marathon has been postponed. That normally attracts around 38,000 runners, but due to the amount of increasing cases in Japan, a lot of public gatherings and events have been cancelled. So some good news coming out of Shanghai is that 50% of all people who were infected with the virus have recovered and been discharged from hospital. So of the 331, 161 patients have now been discharged and declared that they are recovered and free of the virus. Also a leading scientist here in China, Zhang Nan Shan, has said that he believes that the virus will peak in southern China around the end of February and that for the rest of China the peak will be sometime during April. Epidemic researchers at China's CDC have announced that in total across 422 hospitals within China that just over 3,000 medical workers have become infected. These figures include both those who have and being tested positive for the virus as well as those who have shown clinical diagnosis of the virus. This obviously highlights how contagious the disease is and also within Hubei province um, sort of highlights the shortages of medical protection equipment. There are still shortages of protection equipment within Hubei simply because of the number of people infected and the massive uh, demand for medical equipment. And what I would say to people who are, you know, thinking of criticizing China, who are criticizing China, that just think if, if your city or your country had 60 or 70,000 cases of a highly uh, transmittable um, infection, how, how well your city or your country would deal with it. I'm pretty sure it would be similar, if not worse, than, than China have dealt with it. And I think you need to, to exercise some understanding of the situation and just how many people are affected by this, both both patients and medical workers. Those medical workers are doing a fantastic job. Um, you know, many of them are not getting a lot of sleep. Many of them are, are missing proper meals just so they can, can keep up with the demand and help as many people as they can. So you really need to sort of um, think about that before making any criticism. There have been reported a further 99 confirmed cases on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, which is currently quarantined in a harbour in Japan. 
Um, a number of countries have evacuated their citizens and I think Australia are the latest country to announce that they will evacuate citizens. It seems in hindsight that it was a really bad idea to keep people quarantined on the ship and it seems that this has just exaggerated the spread of the virus around other people on the ship. Maybe if people had have been taken off the ship then far less people would have been infected but I guess we will never know um, if that is the case or not, but it does seem that is the case. Malaysia have barred any people returning to Malaysia from the ship that disembarked in Cambodia. Initially, Cambodian authorities have said all people have been tested and confirmed not to be carrying the virus. It's now later turned out that not everybody was tested and there's a number of other governments questioning um, the way Cambodia have dealt with this. Malaysia have barred people since uh, one returnee to Malaysia was later tested as being positive to be carrying the virus. US companies with manufacturing bases here in China have been recently surveyed and 78% of those have said that they are facing difficulties with getting production back up and running to full capacity in their factories. This is mainly due to a shortage of labor as many factories in, in large cities in China are, are staffed by migrant workers uh, many of those migrant workers are finding difficulties with returning to the cities due to a number of travel restrictions around the majority of China. Due to the growing number of cases also in Singapore, they have issued new quarantine guidelines for Singapore nationals and long-term pass holders returning to Singapore from China. Those people will now have to stay in a mandatory 14-day quarantine at home and monitor their health um, closely. So that's all the news I have for you today. Uh, so that does bring me to the end of another update. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate your support. Um, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you like the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you want to know as soon as a new video is released by us, then please hit those bells. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow. But in the meantime, as usual, take care.